Do you want to listen to me talk about a seven-year-old mob by dating sim for an hour? Welcome to the party! Yippee! Mystic Messenger endings. I'm just going to be talking about the bad endings for the time being. I think I'll just do a separate good ending tier list where I'm just nice about the game and I just talk about how much I like it. And I'll just rank the endings based on how much I like them. But when it comes to fucking bad and bad endings, we are in fucking hell. Okay, so, quick overview. You get a text message from a stranger. Hello. He tells you to go to this apartment. He tells you to break into the apartment. You do it. Somehow being in the apartment locks you onto this chat room. The chat room is filled with these hot people and they're part of the hot people club, the RFA. This is Yusan Kim. He is a college student. He is Rika's cousin. Talk about Rika later. This is Zen. He is an actor. Next is Jay Kang. My... <laughs> my business partner. She is an assistant. Jimin Han. <laughs> if I... If, if my power was left unchecked, boy would I go rogue about Jimin Han. But he is a... a he is a CEO. He's the big boss of CNR. I actually... <laughs> I have this like law firm near my place called CNR. Anyway, CNR shout out. Next is 707. Seven, I call him Seven. If you want to know the law for that, check out my other video. Anyway, he is a hacker. <laughs> He's funny. <laughs> Unknown. He's also a hacker. Um, no reason that I talked about him after Seven. No reason at all. V. <laughs> Photographer. He wears sunglasses because he just, he doesn't like the sun. He is Rika's fiance. Rika, I don't think she has a last name. Leader of the RFA, cousin of Yusung, fiance of V. Leader of cult. <laughs> it was like, should I talk about that? Yeah, leader of cult. Moving on. On to the actual tier list. Yippee! Here are our tiers. First, we have fuck it, delete the game. Fuck! Delete the app! I guess, I guess we're going on the curse scale. The shit that's so cursed that so you're like, fuck it, I can't do this anymore. And I will be putting shit in there, but I will be lying because I haven't deleted the game. The only time I deleted the game was when my phone died. That's the only time it has not been on my phone since it came out. Is that awful? Yes. Am I ashamed? No. No, I'm not. Because if I were ashamed of it, I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have my YouTube fame. <laughs> I'm sorry. Next is a returning tier. It's screaming and crying, everyone. It's screaming and crying. It's the shit that's like, that you see it and you start screaming and crying. <coughs> but you're like, sure, I'll keep the game around. I'll see how much more it can make me scream and cry. And it will, it will make you keep screaming and keep crying. <laughs> Third tier is, what? Why? It's like the bridge between the lowest bad end tier and like screaming and crying. Cause I realized there has to be a tier for the stuff that's not a shrug. When you see it, you don't shrug, but you also don't start screaming and crying. You're just like a little bit confused, what? maybe a little bit horrified. Next is the lowest like bad end tier, I'd say. It's, um, okay, lol. <laughs> Look, the thing is, these tiers are like your reactions to things, so I can't do my reactions to the reactions. It's like when I read it, like that's it. And the last tier is the endings where you're like, no, that should have happened. That was God's plan. <laughs> We start with, um, I talked about the prologue last time, and it's the prologue bad ending. I think the prologue is like, mega fucked up. <laughs> Where again, stranger texts you, tells you to go to the apartment, and then you break into the apartment. But, if you are a person who is not dumb as rocks, God bless OMC, she's so stupid. If you're not stupid, if you're smart enough to doubt the person that led you to the apartment, but not smart enough to not go to the apartment in the first place, and not smart enough to leave once you feel like something's fishy and just tell him that he's like, what the fuck? They're not fishy. You should do what I'm telling you. And if you don't do what he's telling you, he's like, you know what, bitch? I knew you were a liar. He comes out from like the like elevator or like reality TV show style. He's like, there were cameras everywhere. It was a prank. And then he blows up the apartment. <laughs> no, my bad. Yeah, he kidnaps you. He doesn't blow you up. But to be fair, it's like the two things on his checklist. Yeah, that blows you up or it kidnaps you. So, you know, just saying, I mean, like, be original. Something they gave to this unknown guy that he didn't have before was his funny little mask. I mean, he always had the mask, but he didn't have a filter. Now he has like a That's voice right. filter. So when I was playing through the prologue and I was like, you know what, just to be a little cheeky, a little bit funny, a little bit silly, a little bit goofy, I'm going to get the bad ending. And then... Um, unknown popped out and I was like, hey buddy, and then he started talking. <laughs> I'm like, sir, how are you doing that? It kind of scared me. I think that's kind of screaming and crying. 
I'm sure there were some people that got that ending and were like, no, fuck it, I'm deleting the game, but I wasn't one of them. <laughs> Next is the casual story bad end, which I have, I have talked about in my other video, you should watch my other video. But this is the casual story bad end, where if you don't flirt enough with one particular person, if you flirt too much with the two people who aren't part of the casual story, you, you sung snaps. And he's like, guys, I have to be real with you. We're all robots. We've been programmed by V and we don't have free will anymore. Guys, I think we're living in a simulation. A dating simulation. <laughs> yeah, and like most bad endings, it ends up with him being kidnapped. Most of these bad endings end up with someone being kidnapped by a certain person, will not name names. Honestly, this is actually the first ending I ever got in the game when I first played it because I was down so fucking bad for Savannah. I saw him and I was like, I can't not flirt with this guy. I can't not do it. And then I did it and I got the bad ending. <laughs> and it's the fucking bad ending screen, you know, the like red screen. It's so scary. For fucking what? It really scared me. I think I didn't play the game for like a week. <laughs> for like a week. I didn't touch it for like a week. Um, but I mean, I think it's just kind of like, um, okay. <laughs> Whatever. Next is the deep story bad ending. The deep story bad ending is like really really tame and really really like normal <laughs> compared to the casual story bad ending. They like spent all their um, batshit insane points on the casual story and had nothing to do for the, the deep story bad ending. Sven's like, dude I think I should let you know there's a bomb in this building. I think you need to get the fuck out. And he tells you to get the fuck out and he kicks you out of the chat room. Which I think that's a good ending. I mean, Rip to V got kidnapped, but I think like <laughs> any ending where you leave the ROV <laughs> before like the ship of any rig goes down, I think that's a good ending. Um, next is the um the bomb. <laughs> I was reading through them, and a lot of the bad endings have like very similar formulas, and the only difference is like who you're flooding with before you're flooding with death. And this is like any ending that just involves the bomb going off in the apartment because you were so evil to be mad about the bomb being in the building and so evil to talk shit about V when he put the bomb in the building. And you know what? I think this death is your fault. I think if you were just a little bit nicer and found it within you to accept and forgive the bomb, you wouldn't be dead right now. And it's any ending that's like that. That shit pisses me off, because can you fucking blame her? You put the bomb in the building and you're gonna be like, you know what, MC, I don't know why you're so mad. No, that's that's screaming and crying. Anyway, the second one is any of the bad endings that involve you getting kidnapped by unknown, because whenever they don't know what to do, they're just like, you know what, get in there, kidnap her. And he's always like, you're mine now. Would I rank the kidnapping on the same level as the bomb? No, I mean, I think I'm putting it in what why. It doesn't make me as mad. Usually what it involves is just you being like kind of mean to them or you being um, not there <laughs> or you being like the absentee father to the RFA. It, it doesn't make me as angry. Maybe this list should just be like endings based on how angry they make me. Uh, next is the <laughs> the Yandere Yusung ending, which I actually got a lot of comments on my other video about the Yandere Yusung ending. Um, which I just kind of find like kind of funny to be honest <laughs> because okay so basically Yusung uh well uh let's just say he cares a lot about <laughs> he cares a lot about his cousin <laughs> and, and during his break he's, he's like you know what you remind me a lot of my cousin and I think she was really cool and if you're like I think I am like your cousin it's okay, yeah, I can be Nika 2.0. If you do that and also like shit talk the RFA at the same time, then once the bomb is revealed, Yusung's like, fuck, no, you can't do this to my Nika. <laughs> they just came out with a sequel, I've been waiting so long for it. He he goes over to, to Zaven's house. He threatens Zaven that if he doesn't give Yusung the address to the apartment so he can go and protect his Rika, then he's gonna destroy Seven's laptop, which one, Seven has a fucking ton of laptops, and two, Seven is a trained secret agent, trained to maneuver his way out of these situations, and he's like, yeah, sure, I don't care, go put yourself in danger, I don't give a shit, I think Seven was just playing around, he was just fucking around. Yeah, so then he follows the coordinates to find Rika's apartment to go and save you. And funnily enough, 
when he steps into the apartment. The bomb is like, um, it's like an intruder system. So if it like notices that there's an intruder, and I could talk for ages about the whole fucking bomb intruder system thing because it's like, how does it recognize who's an intruder? Why didn't it go off when MC came in? Because she was an intruder. You could say that like, oh, unknown hacked, so the bomb wouldn't go off. But then Seven would have known that the, it was hacked in, and the bomb thing was hacked in, and whatever, whatever, whatever. There's not a video about that. Yeah, so the intruder system that, well, spots when there's an intruder in the apartment, politely waits until Yusung finishes his batshit insane spiel about how you're the new generation Zika and he won't let you leave like Zika did. <laughs> the bomb's like, okay, you done? And then it blows My up. My main goal is to blow up. And you both die in the apartment. To me, it's kind of like, um, okay. <laughs> but I think it's a lot funnier when you're just kind of talking about it. But when you're in the moment, it's really unsettling. Because Shim Gyuhyuk? Gyuhyuk? I'm sorry if I said that wrong and it sounded a bit too much like Goofy. But he did an amazing job in this ending and it's very unnerving. And the, and the dialogue is unnerving. And the music is unnerving. And the sprite, I mean, it looks kind of ugly. It looks kind of ugger, because, you know, Yusung sprites are kind of ugger, but I appreciate the effort for that and how unnerving it is. I'm gonna put it in what? Why? But the funny thing about that ending is Yusung's route was the first route I ever played. And I think a good, a good measure of my self-esteem back then is I saw nothing wrong with him seeing me as Rika. I was like, you know what? Sure, I can be your dead cousin for you. I mean, if you'd like it like that, so... <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so next is it's just a photorealistic picture of a park. <laughs> this refers to the kidnapping of Yu Sung Kim, the first one. If you, you know, if you are so evil and you have so little in your heart that you have to say that the bomb is bullshit and you have to say that V is bullshit, then, you know, Yu Sung loses his trust in V. He is even more convinced that Riga's death was not actually a suicide, but a murder. And he asks MC <laughs> to meet him at Forest Park 246. And there they meet a stranger who seems to know that Riga's death was actually a murder. But he also seems to know Yusung's name without having been told. And I wonder who this stranger could be. <laughs> and eventually you're like, hey dude, how do you know what Yusung's name is? So he kidnaps him. The Mystic Messenger bingo, but all of the squares are just kidnapping. <laughs> I still think it's fucked up that this is one of those endings where you get for like being justifiably, reasonably angry about the bomb and reasonably angry at V. But I mean, this one isn't the one where... I think this one ends with just him being kidnapped and it doesn't like go into it. The next one goes into it. So I think for that... Yeah, I think that one just goes into what, why. I was thinking that, like, I would put the genuinely unnerving ones in Screaming and Crying, and I was thinking that the, the Yonder to Yusung one is pretty unnerving. Yeah, I'm gonna do the unprecedented critical thinking and move this one up a tier, because thinking about it more, it is kind of fucked up. F first blow, Yusung is attracted to his dead cousin. Second blow, Yusung mistakes you and is attracted to you because you remind him of his dead cousin. Blow three, he overpowers Seven, a trained secret agent, to get GPS coordinates and interpret GPS coordinates to find you. <laughs> Blow four, he shows up at the apartment and he looks like fucking this. <laughs> Blow five, he's like, hello, Rika. Blow six, he's like, you don't really look like Rika, but it's okay. Blow seven, the apartment blows up. No, yeah, that's screaming and crying. Next is the kidnapping of Yusung Kim 2. So near the end of Yusung's route, his big story moment where he's like, I've changed a baby girl. <laughs> Where you're like, you changed him, you fixed him. <laughs> his his big um romantic gesture is he decides to risk his life to follow Seven to the cult that has been threatening you basically the entire route. He's like, Seven, I'm gonna go with you to prove my undying love to MC. Wouldn't be really undying if you died. I I just have like a general problem with the whole like oh I'd be willing to die for you kind of energy in this game because I think something they don't talk enough about is that like yeah once you die you're dead but I have to deal with you being dead. It's a sweet gesture on the surface but when you read more into it it's like I'd be willing to give you lifelong trauma. 
what was I talking about? Yu Sung decides to go with Seven to Mintai the cult. And if if you encourage it, but in the sense of like, yeah, no, you're not just willing to die for me, you will. Then when he goes to the cult, because you didn't give him enough encouragement, when they're found by unknown, I think Yusung doesn't have like enough confidence to um, safely get away or something, and unknown kidnaps him again. <laughs> and in this ending, they show you what happens after he gets kidnapped. They show him like they show that 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 unknown. I feel like at this point I should start calling him Sedan, but yeah, it sure is Sedan like torturing him. Like he like he like ties him up and. And, and 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 stuff and he's like this is what my mother used to do to me and it's like ah and then and then and then i mean like the really funny thing is that like then sedan insinuates that he killed his mother which those of you who have played another story know that that's not true dika killed his mother so that's either like a retcon or even more tragically that Dika killed his mother and then gaslit him into thinking he killed his mother to be like a, you're so strong said and look you murdered your mother which I'm not saying she didn't deserve it she fucking she fucking had what was coming for her anyway <laughs> And I feel like it'd be remiss for me to not talk about the Tumblr edits of this scene. <laughs> I mean, this is the main reason I put this in the list because I actually took out an ending that I thought was like too triggering, but I just I had to talk about the fucking Tumblr edits, the things, the horror of this ending goes beyond the ending itself. It like permeates into the fandom. It's like. I wasn't super active in the fandom on Tumblr, but you know, I was there and I caught wind of the edits every now and then. I think a particularly popular one was to um <laughs> was to edit unknown as Seven. <laughs> I, I think because of that, that goes up into fuck it, delete the game. Next one is <laughs> the Yusun Gamer ending. <laughs> So there are two types of like bad endings in this game. Bad story endings are like influenced by your actual choices in the story, and bad relationship endings are like if you just fuck off for like way too long and you don't get a high enough completion rate. The first bad relationship ending for you, Sung Zoo, is one of the few bad relationship endings that doesn't involve you either getting blown up or getting kidnapped, so that's a, a win in there. So Yu Sung tells you that like, I think I may have confused you with Rika, and I don't think I'm ready to be in a relationship yet. And I'm like, yeah, I fucking respect that. I think that's so cool. And then and then after that, he just goes to Seven's house and then they play games. And then Seven does the funny little thing he loves to do where he breaks the fourth wall and he's like, do you fucked up? <laughs> he's like, if you just got more affection with Yusung, if you just like came in and talked to us more, you would have built more of a connection with him and you would not be getting this bad ending. But you know what? I don't think it's a bad ending. I mean, he understands his boundaries. He understands himself. He's self-aware in the not creepy robot way. And then he goes to Seven's house and they get married. And I think that's amazing. I think that's a good ending, actually. Now we move on to Zen's route. Full disclosure, I have never played any of Zen's bad endings because I don't like his route. <laughs> so all of this is just research on the wiki. Thank you, the wiki. First, we have Zen's first bad ending. You're toxic and bad news. You're toxic and you're bad news. If in Zen's route you are a bit of a bitch to him, then when he breaks his leg, the RFA are like, someone should come over and take care of him. And you're like, fine, I guess if I have to. So you go over to his house and they give you like an allotted time slot, like you will be there for two hours and then you will leave. And normally you don't leave. But during the bad end, you're like, no, no fuck, fuck this, I'm getting out of here. Get that fire exit though, I'm off. And then you get out of there, or you try to. Zen stops you and he's like, you've been really mean to me recently, but I think you're just playing hard to get. And you know, I think that's kind of hot. And that goes on for a whole year because you start dating. Yeah, and basically the bad ending is that you guys are dating and it's a really toxic relationship. In a universe with bombs and cults, I think, unfortunately, a toxic relationship has to kind of go here. <laughs> so the next... Mm, Zen's bad endings, I'm realizing, are just sad. Yu songs are like fucked up, but Zen's are just sad. So the next one is, um, 
I think in order to explain a lot of these, I'll, I'll have to explain what happens in his route. So this 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 girl comes over because they're gonna be like co-workers on this um, show that he's working on. She comes over and then she leaves, and then she comes over again late at night. She shows up to his door and she's like, I saw how you've been looking at me. And I mean, if you want to touch my ginormous honga bonga bulunga boombas, you should just say so. And he's like, I really don't want to do that. And she's like, no, no, you're lying. It's okay. You don't have to lie to me. I know you want to. And he's like, I really don't. And that goes on for a while. And then once he very, very strongly tells her to go the fuck home, she like throws a tantrum about it and she starts a rumor that he sexually assaulted her. <sighs> Which, look, I am very aware that men are also victims of sexual harassment and I think it's a very important issue to address. But not in this way, I don't think. Not in such a cartoonishly evil way. I mean, she came over and she was like, touch my tits. And he didn't. And she was like, you know what? Fuck you. I'm going to ruin your career. It's like, who is like, is there anyone that's actually like that? I think once something becomes that cartoonish, no one takes it seriously. Which brings up another problem of like cartoonishly evil women in Mystic Messenger. Because <laughs> they, they're, I'll talk about them once we get to this one. But they also, they, they make a return in June. Jumin's Root. Jumin's Root is... Well, Jumin's Root is a lot of things, but it's also like <laughs> the breeding ground for cartoonishly evil women. <laughs> he's got like a he's got like a Minecraft spawner of cartoonishly evil women in his penthouse. Um, what was I talking about? So, for his bad ending, he starts to realize, I think I'm gonna have to go fight, fight the rumor. So, he holds this like press conference where he defends himself with nothing and yeah it ruins his career and he is out of a job and that's the ending and that is really sad so it's not cursed it's just kind of sad i think but putting aside the ridiculousness of the whole um sexual assault allegation thing and how it was handled this is a fairly realistic ending of like someone's career being ruined by a by an allegation so I don't know where to put it. Shit, I need to make a tear for like, that's sad. I'm gonna do that. That's sad. <laughs> I'll put that one there. I guess I should also put the toxic relationship one in that. Yeah, that's also sad. Next is the, as someone in my comment section described, the ending where Zen joins the cult and becomes MC's vampire actor, <laughs> which I see where they're coming from. I know what you are. Say it. Out loud. The vampire actor. So the next one is um, Zen has a psychic dream. He has psychic dreams. He has psychic dreams. He just actually has psychic dreams. And that's the bad ending. Of game. <laughs> so Zen has a psychic dream about um, unknown breaking into the apartment and kidnapping MC, which. Spoilers, that happens. He can actually just predict the future, and I do not love that for him. So, um, Zen goes over to Savan's place and, like, he pulls a Yu Sun Kim, and it's a little bit more realistic because Zen is, I, I guess, ripped as shit. Though I think Savan's also pretty ripped. Um, photo evidence, please? Can I, <laughs> can I see some photo evidence, please? So Zen goes over to Savan's place and, um, he threatens him for the apartment address. And true to his psychic dream, Sedan breaks into the apartment, he kidnaps MC, and then he kidnaps Zen. And he makes Zen into his little, like, actor puppet guy because he's bored? Like, how does Unknown have the time to be bored? He's like Mintai's designated hacker who does everything. He does all the surveillance, he does all the defense, he does all the, um, all the spying, <laughs> he does all the stalking. Do you really have the time to be sitting around here making your little, like, your little dolls kiss on stage or whatever, dressing your dolls up in vampire costumes and making them reenact Twilight? Do you really have the time for that? Get back to what I'm getting! <laughs> yeah, so basically Zen is like a cultist actor now? And again, I haven't played this ending myself. I think if I actually did, I would have more to say about it and it would probably be sadder. But I will have to say, this CG is pretty sad. Also, it does look like he cut off his rat tail. It looks like he cut off Zen's rat tail, which I think is the saddest thing of all this. And th that, that, that lands it into that sad. The next one is actually Jehi's route. <sighs> Man, 
Oh shit, oh my god, I have to talk about Jay, he's rude. I've been trying to, so I wanted to play through like the entire Mystic Messenger game because I thought that would be fun and that involves playing Jay's route and god I have been trying, I have been trying so hard to make it through Jay's route but every single time I just get so angry and I want to do it for her, I really want to do it for her. I haven't been doing- I- I've- I've been genuinely gamer rage quitting. FUCK! Delete the app! I just- I genuinely can't <sighs> fucking do it. And I think the first ending is the fucking worst one. So the first one I call Zen's Root Pocket Sight. Okay, so for perspective, when Zen breaks his leg in Yusung's Root, everyone's like, oh no dude, that sucks. Alright, MC Light. And then they move on with their lives. But in Jehi's route, when Zen breaks his leg, everything comes to a halt. Everyone starts talking about how Zen's lived such a hard life his whole whole life. He's never had anyone to rely on. You know, if only there was a nice, strong business, <laughs> nice strong businesswoman who could come over and take care of him and soothe his loneliness or whatever and teach him to rely on people in Jehi's route. But in the bad ending, if you're like really corny for Zen, when he breaks his leg, you go over to his house instead of Jehi's, so it literally is just the exact same thing as Zen's route. But yeah, um, you go over to Zen's place to take care of him, and then you guys start dating. You guys start dating in, in, in Jehi's route. That would never fucking happen in a million goddamn years in any other fucking route. In any other goddamn route, you would not be caught dead holding hands with anyone else in the RFA. Okay, hi, editing Mimi here. Um, I am very aware that the Rika ending in V's route is a thing. And yes, it's dating someone in someone else's route. But one, I forgot about that. <laughs> and two, V's route has a lot of cucking in it. So it just kind of feels like par for the course. Like every ending of his has like cucking in some way. It's either like you're getting cucked or he's getting cucked or Ray's getting cucked or Rudiger's getting cucked, you know? So anyway, um, tangent over. Thank you for listening. But in this one, the bad ending involves you dating Zen, which I know it's a bad ending, but the fact that it's an option that is real, you start dating him. And, and even in the route itself, they talk about her love life and whatever like they usually do in any other route, but specifically around the tension between her and Zen? Yusung literally asked Zen in one of the chat rooms, have you ever considered dating Jay? I'm gonna fucking strangle you, Yusung Kim! I'm gonna kill you, I need to find you. You shut your goddamn whore mouth. Yusung even goes as far to be like, you know, Jay's getting older. You know, she's expiring. I think it's about time she finds a husband before she expires. And it's like, what the fuck? Oh, I'm putting a hit on you, Yusung Kim. You are fucking dead to me. What was I talking about? <laughs> I'm sorry, I got really mad. Um, right, the ending. To make this ending worse, not only do you start dating Zen in Jehi's goddamn fucking route, Jehi, who was waiting for a vacation, gets more work instead. And it flashes forward to like a year later or something when you're at a party celebrating Jehi's pay raise like she's not suffering and dying and screaming. She she gets a pay raise and she wants to go over and talk to MC about it because you guys are still like pretty good friends. But she decides, no, I can't talk to her because she's, I want to give her privacy because she's dating Zen. So not only do you start dating Zen, you make Jehi feel so bad that she doesn't even want to talk to you anymore. What the actual fuck? I know this doesn't involve any cult shit, any bomb shit, but no, that, that makes me so angry. That goes into delete the game. My equivalent of deleting the game is just not being able to make it through Jay history. So the next one, the next one is, uh, uh, the next one is an ending I've written down in my notes as Jesus fucking Christ. <laughs> Basically, if you just act like Jew men, if you give Jehi a lot of shit, if you're overly critical of her, if you never appreciate her, if you tell her that she should just go back to work and feel lucky that she even has a job, then she overworks herself and collapses. Which is not only a thing that happens in the bad ending, but also in the... <sighs> In the story, they tell you about a time that's happened before. A year before the game starts, a similar situation happened where she was overworked and she collapsed and she went to the hospital and got a vitamin shot and kept fucking working. <sighs> yeah, so anyway, in this, um, 
in this ending, yeah, she overworks herself and collapses, and then she ultimately decides to leave Sienna, which, I mean, <laughs> I, I think that's kind of like a good thing. <laughs> I'm, I'm kind of happy for her a little bit. That, I mean, I don't like how she got there, but I'm glad that she like got out of there because the whole thing about Jehi is that she always feels like she's not stable, like financially stable enough, because her entire life has been about things constantly changing that were outside of her control. Um, so she doesn't like the idea of ever changing the status quo because she feels like it's not safe. So Jehi's whole thing is that she gets a lot of money from working because CNR does genuinely pay really well. So she has a lot of money and she is financially stable, but she doesn't have the courage to like break away from Sina. Which stands for chains and ropes, I'm kidding. <laughs> So all Jehi really wants is a vacation and the courage to leave Sienna. Get that fire exit door, I'm off. And she does in this bad ending, but again, like at what fucking cost? She also like takes a break from the RFA, which again, I mean, I'm, I'm happy for her in that sense that you know she's taking a break from things, but like the way she got there, it's really sad. And I'm like, I'm, I'm juggling between, sorry, I'm actually juggling between three tiers. That's sad. Fuck it, delete the game. And a good ending, actually. Because, again, her getting out of CNR, that's amazing. I'm so happy for her. But everything else about the ending is really fucking sad. Should I make another tier called that's really fucking sad? <laughs> no, okay, she, I'll, I'll, put her, I'll put her in there. The next bad ending is what I have dubbed Jumin's root pocket size. So, yeah, you know, like, flirt with Jumin, act really horny for him, and he will make you his assistant. Yippee! Note how this is a bad ending. <laughs> you become Jumin's assistant, but Jay's like, please, please, oh god, please don't do that! Please, 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 don't, don't! You don't know what you're doing, you don't know what you're getting into! But you still do it. And you're kind of a shitty assistant, but I mean, I guess Jumin values your loyalty? Like, you're a dog, or a or, or a cat. <laughs> that reminds him of someone, <laughs> sorry. And then he teaches you how to tie a tie, and that's the ending. I mean, I don't know. I didn't really have anything else to say about this one. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Uh, okay, so now we move on to Jumin's root. <laughs> My favorite thing to talk about. <laughs> I never understood the whole, like, love and hate are a coin flip away, but I talk about Jumin so much that you would be very much excused for thinking that I did very much like this guy, but don't get twisted. Don't get as sick and twisted. I hate this guy. <laughs> so the first bad ending is what I have called the girls are fighting! So if you're really horny for Jumin's wealth, you know, Jumin, you know what would make you just like the hottest guy ever if you transferred three million dollars to my bank account, which honestly... <laughs> Go queen, I'm kidding! <laughs> At this point in the route, Jumin's dealing with the cartoonishly evil women that I talked about earlier. They've started to spawn near his house. But this time in a different breed because I guess one of them has captured his dad's heart and now he's trying to sell him off. The chairman is now trying to sell his son off to marriage so that they can acquire a company that his new girlfriend says that she really wants. <laughs> so right now in Jumin's life, he's dealing with that. And if you basically act as cartoonishly evil, then when you guys go into CNR to discuss the state of affairs, uh, the girl, the cartoonishly evil woman, Sarah, comes in, and you and Sarah break into a cat fight, and the girls are fighting. And Jumin's like, fuck yeah, the girls are fighting. And Jay's like, I shouldn't we stop the girls from fighting? And he's like, no, no, let them keep fighting. And he likes it so much that he... <laughs> He brings you into the company. Another bad ending that involves you being employed at CNR, by the way. Just putting that out there. Yeah, he likes it so much that you become the new sales manager, who, according to the wiki, is quote unquote uniquely talented and doesn't dress like normal people. <laughs> They're like, no, she shows up to work fucking stark naked, but like, Jumin's okay with it, so like, we're just gonna have to put up with it. That is, I mean, I, <laughs> I don't know. I think it's funny. So next is, I believe, arguably the most infamous Mystic Messenger bad ending. Capital T, the bad ending. <laughs> so this is the one where where if you're really horny for Jumin's bestiality tendencies. Okay, I also have to give context for what happens leading up to this. So, uh, 
okay. Zen has the psychic dream about Elizabeth running away. Juman's like, I don't care, but he actually does. He puts Elizabeth in a cage <laughs> and he stops coming to work. And Jay, he's like, one, it's making her life a living nightmare. But two, she also genuinely cares about his well-being, which makes me so angry. She is so nice. She is so fucking nice. She is so sweet and she cares so much. And it makes me so angry. Like, girly, don't do that to yourself. Value yourself. <sighs> anyway. Yeah, so Jehi is concerned about him, and she asks MC to come over and, like, check up on him, basically. Um, so when she comes to his house, Jumin kind of does a 180, and he's like, Oh my god, all my problems are fixed now, and my life is infinitely better. You're like therapy in a bottle for me, <laughs> sorry. He's like, you know what? I don't need Elizabeth anymore. You're all I need. And you can either be like, so you see me as your pet? Or you can be like, fuck yeah, you see me as your pet. And if you're like, fuck yeah, you see me as your pet. And you kind of encourage the felinifying and the possessiveness and the, oh yeah, also he doesn't let you leave his house because he's like, if you leave my house, I'll literally go insane. So yeah, if you kind of encourage that, if you're like, yeah, no, I don't want you to go insane. You should, <laughs> you should keep me uh, tied up in your house so I can never leave. Um, and then you get this ending uh which is the you know the one where he uh <laughs> true to your word he locks you in his house forever he keeps you as his like again therapy in a bottle the bad ending itself involves you testing out this new pair of heels that have gps in them which you would think that's not necessary because she can't leave the house but you know what she can do? She can walk more than 50 meters away from him and, and she can't do that. So if she does that, um, the, the, the shoes are gonna snitch on her basically. Yeah, and this is the bad ending that leads onto his bad ending DLC, which has absolutely nothing to do with this, by the way. The bad ending DLC that involves, <laughs> that involves one, you fucking in his basement, two, you astral projecting into seeing his childhood trauma, and three, <laughs> his mother lying about having cancer so that she can get him to marry a, a rich girl. <laughs> is this what being rich is like? Just being constantly sold off in marriages and having your friends and family lie to you about having cancer? Good lord. So this ending, I again, I think it's the, like, it's the voice acting that really makes this. Like, Yong Wu Shin, I believe is his name, does an amazing fucking job. Like, 항상 같은 자리에서 가장 안전한 형태로 나만 바라보고 나의 이야기만을 듣는 삶을 선택해 주더니 사이즈가 딱 맞아 내가 생각했던 것 이상으로 예쁘군. Young Woo Shin in general does an amazing fucking job with Jumin. I especially so because apparently he's actually just a pretty chill guy. <laughs> like I I listened to one of the after talks and he's just like a chill guy with like a podcast. So I think it's amazing that he's able to pull off such a um, criminally insane man as. Jumin Han, and very well also. On the one hand, I'm kind of sad that I don't think this game will ever be fully voice acted ever, but on the other hand, I'm very happy for Young Wu Shin that he doesn't have to say some of the shit that Jumin says <laughs> in his room. I think he really dodged a bullet on that one, so I'm happy for him. But he didn't dodge the bullet on the bad ending, instead he caught it. <laughs> it's the sound design really that um, definitely sells this ending. So, it is pretty unnerving, and I will put it up here. So, <laughs> what the fuck is this? I don't actually remember what this is. I need to look at my notes for this. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I have to talk about his route again. So, the Jumin's biggest excuse, beyond the whole, if you leave my penthouse, I will go insane, his other big excuse about keeping you locked up in his penthouse is the bomb threat, which, okay, that's fair but even after being assured by Seven the person who is like who has the bomb know-how he's still like I don't trust any of these motherfuckers you should you should stay here I don't think it's safe and even even after he says you know what I think it's safe now I'm gonna let you go tomorrow he doesn't let you go tomorrow and he's like okay we'll just we'll just have lunch and then you'll go home but he doesn't get home by lunchtime so you stay until dinner and he's like well you know I mean it's this 
late and you're already here, so like we might as well, you might as well just like stay here to the party, right? I mean, that really sucks that it's like so late, you know? But I mean, perfect opportunity for you to stay over. We can have a sleepover, maybe talk about crushes. Hopefully it's me. Anyway, but if you insist that like, dude, literally everyone in your fucking life has said that it's fine and you're playing up this bomb thing as a front to excuse you just wanting to keep me at your house, kind of against my will at this point, if you insist that that's the case, which I think that is the case, then it turns out that he was actually right all along and it wasn't safe yet at the apartment. And you go to the apartment and guess who's waiting for you there? Yeah, so uh, Unknown's there. Yippee. I think he's pissed that he lost the battle to Seven because he he hacked into the system and then Seven fixed it. So he's pissed that that happened and Nurika, who was the leader of the cult that they're part of, gave him this switch and she was like, if you press the switch, you'll be able to make Seven really suffer. And Unknown's like, fuck yeah. So he comes to the apartment, he presses the switch. Guess what the switch does? It blows up the apartment. <laughs> <laughs> so basically, <laughs> basically, Rika gave him a suicide switch, <laughs> and that's the reason why I separate this from the regular bomb endings because this one you don't just die, you take unknown with you, <laughs> which I think is again kind of funny. But the fact, the fact that this ending justifies Jumin's behavior justifies that he was right about insisting that it wasn't safe. That makes me so angry. Now the next one is a bad relationship ending. I don't talk about a lot of those again because most of them just involve you either getting kidnapped or the bomb thing. So. But this one is a little bit different. As I said earlier, a big thing in Jumin's route is that his father is slimy as hell, crusty as hell, Slimy and crusty and slimy and crusty and crusty and slimy and crusty and slimy. The grossest sandwich ever. Yeah, so the the, the big plot line in in, in Jumin's route is that his father, you know, gets a new girlfriend and his girlfriend's like, you know what, babe, I think it'd be really hot if you like bought this company that my student owns and you know if you got your son to marry my student, then you could buy the company at a discount price. It's like I think it's an investment. That's right, marriage is an investment, but anyway. I mean, I know the way I described it makes it sound like she's the one pulling the strings or whatever, and like, yeah, she kind of is. But the game kind of uh, frames him as like this kind of helpless, stupid little bumbling idiot fool who, he just couldn't help it. He was manipulated by this evil, this evil woman. He's a victim, honestly. He's, he's a victim for being a fucking grown man who has full control over his own decisions, forcing his son into a marriage that is an investment so they can buy a company for a discount price. I think he's the victim in all of this. I honestly think that's sad. I mean, I feel really bad for him, honestly. Yeah, so the, the game's like that, and if you get the bad relationship ending, where, again, you fuck off for too long and you don't talk to them, <laughs> then the bad ending involves the chairman successfully forces Jumin into the in, into the arranged marriage but he, because he is crusty as fuck like this this man's entire existence makes me so fucking mad and not mad in the sense that like Seven's parents make me mad because Seven's parents make me really mad because they suck but they suck on purpose and the story and the game like acknowledges that they suck but the lengths that this game will go to to like justify this man for being like he's just like kind of like he, he's a well-intentioned kind of stupid little idiot but he loves his son. He does not fucking love his son. I'm sorry. Just because you give your son a, like a diamond on a pen does not mean you love your son. I don't care if you were blindsided by those evil women. You are a grown man with control over your decisions and you decided in your grown man crusty, slimy, rotting sandwich brain to sell your son into a marriage that does not make you a good father. Oh my god. So, yeah, no. I mean, his existence makes me want to put it in fuck it, delete the game. But the ending itself, I will split the difference and put the ending in screaming and crying. I'm screaming and crying. 
I'm gonna make you start screaming and crying. <laughs> Where's the ending where I go to this, this man's house and I kick his ass? Where's the ending where I throw him out the window? Because the next ending is the one where I also talked about in the other video, where MC commits suicide. <laughs> I'm sorry, I laughed like that at that. Because of the aforementioned shit with Jumin locking you in his penthouse and stuff, this is the fuck it, I'm jumping ending. <laughs> <laughs> Where when V comes over to Jumin's house to be like, dude, can you like cut it out? <laughs> God damn, bitch, take back your cat. Let this poor girl out of your fucking house. You take the opportunity um, of Jumin being distracted in this conversation to jump out his open penthouse window and die. <laughs> I'm kind of inclined to put it into um, okay. <laughs> Does that make me fucked up? <laughs> okay, fine. I'll put it in what, why? Now finally, we move on to Savensri, which would be the first time I've ever talked about Savensri, I think. Because despite him being my favorite character, I think I talked about him for a grand total of maybe like two minutes in my last video. Savensri is one of those routes that I took a bad ending out of because I did not want to talk about it. Because that shit, like I read it and I like dissociated <laughs> for a good minute or two. So I'm not talking about that. Give the wiki some traction, go read it yourself. Anyway. So the first ending that I'm going to talk about is what I call the cucknapping of MC. It's like the other kidnapping ones, but with a little fucked up cocky twist to it. Because in this one, he doesn't just kidnap her, but they say explicitly that he takes pictures of him torturing her and sends them to Seven. <sighs> I think that's really fucked up. So as for my verdict for this one, I don't know if I should also put it in screaming and crying. I think I'm kind of like overcrowding that tier. But I put the first one where he kidnaps you, just regularly after leading you to the apartment and screaming and crying. So I think this one also deserves a spot there, like maybe just like right next to it. The next ending is the ending I have called the live love laugh ending. This is potentially a big spoiler, but also not really if you kind of know how this stuff works out because you know, Seven's like, he's a funny little goofy guy, but he's actually very, very depressed. And his route does a little, like, back and forth with him at night being like, I hate my, I hate my job. I hate my living situation. I am very, very depressed. And then him, him in the morning being like, if you saw that, <laughs> no, you fucking didn't. <laughs> and then the next night, again, he's like, my life is a shithole and, um. I can't get close to anyone because anyone that gets close to me is put in danger and that's why I can't make any strong emotional connections with anyone. And then eventually, once shit gets worse and worse and worse in his route, um, he can't keep up the mask anymore. He resigns to being more serious but also a lot more cold. He kind of lets his guard down a little bit more and he, you know, opens up a little bit more in his own way. But if you are completely unresponsive to that and you try to treat him like he's the same funny, little, goofy, silly guy instead of a, a nuanced person with their own issues, then you get the live, love, laugh ending where Seven gives up, basically. <laughs> where you break him down so much that he's like, yeah, I think life would be a lot easier if I were just, you know, funny and silly and goofy all the time and I just ignored everything else and I ran away. So you guys do it and you run away and... <laughs> And I think because they didn't really know where else to go with the ending, it ends with you guys dying in a car crash. <laughs> so that's a little bit random. I think that also goes into that sad. I can't, I can't honestly put it in any other tier. That's sad. So the last ending is the, you know, actually, Drew Min's route, because the majority of his route takes place in his penthouse, there's no kidnapping of anyone. Yeah, no one gets kidnapped in Jumin's route. Wow, <laughs> maybe it is a good route after all. <laughs> anyway, this last ending for Seven is the scheduled, the kidnapping of 707. If you doubt Seven, and actually this one is also a little bit different because usually at this point in the story, the formula is don't doubt V, don't talk shit about V. But at this point in Seven's route, V's connections to the cult have been discovered and people think that he's like the founder of Mintai so they've stopped siding with him but yeah so if you doubt him if you are overly pessimistic and you don't talk shit about V then you get this ending where you and Seven go to infiltrate Mintai 
for information about what they're doing with his with his twin brother. Have I ever explained? I haven't explained in this video that Unknown is his twin brother, but yeah. Unknown is his twin brother. <laughs> I think it's very funny that the guy who has been hidden away basically his entire life, Unknown, looks more different and has changed his appearance more than Seven, who is a secret agent who has to change identities regularly. Isn't that kind of weird? Yeah, so you guys go to Mintai to um, find out more about what they're doing with Sedan and why he, <laughs> why he's like that. And Unknown finds you, and he threatens to do the same thing as he did in the cuck napping ending, but Seven begs him to take him instead, and then he gets kidnapped. This is one of those things where recounting it without the experience of having played it recently takes away a lot of the emotional impact, but I think anything that really involves the twins and their whole situation is generally pretty disturbing and or sad. But it's not as disturbing as the one I cut out. <laughs> so I think I'll put this one in the kind of like the middling tier. Um. This is my bad endings list for the time being. I may add to this. Let me guys know. What? <laughs> Let me know if you guys have gotten any of these endings yourselves. Because again, unlike my previous list about things I had a lot of very personal experience with and I could talk quite lengthily about, I haven't gotten most of these endings. And a lot of this is just kind of like hearing from word of mouth or reading it on the wiki. So... I would love to hear some like first-hand recounts of these, and if any of them are a lot freakier in person, <laughs> which I feel like a lot of them would be. Uh, anyway, thank you for watching, and uh, 